I'm Bart Herbison, Executive Director of the Nashville Songwriters Association, and this week, the story behind the song, Everybody Want to Go to Heaven, Mr. Marty Dodson. You co-wrote it with Jim Collins. Somebody needs to carry Jim, so I'm glad you were Somebody has to help him out. You know, um, that song had a unique road to its big hit version. Because George Strait recorded it on Troubadour, but he only put it out as a digital single. Mm -hmm. And I think he was the one that played it for Kenny, right? Is that right? Or somebody yeah, he actually, that Kenny heard it. He played Kenny everything he had cut for that record on his bus mm -hmm. one day, I think, is the way the story goes. And, and Kenny realized that that, wasn't so, that song wasn't on the record right. when it came out. Well, and even so, even a, a digital single, i, I got to give Kenny props because and he must have loved the song. And it's very what Kenny's doing and what his audience loves, because typically they won't release it like that. But tell me the story behind the song the day you guys wrote it. All right. Well, I I used to have all my song ideas on bank deposit slips and napkins <laughs> in my car and everything. And you I finally are such a songwriter. Man. I finally decided I had to get it all organized, so I bought a database, and I made this database where I put in the song title and kind of a topic or a feel I want for the song and then co-writers that I think I might want to write that idea with. And so I walked in with Jim Collins that day and he said, I said, what do you want to write? And he said, well, I'd like to write a reggae song. Let's just write something fun. And, and so I searched my database and I had one idea by reggae in there and it was everybody wants to go to heaven. So <clears throat> we started throwing that around and realized as we were writing it that it would be a great Kenny or a George straight pitch and um, so it's really ironic that they both wind up cutting it. And I'm surprised because you know how writing sessions start. We want to write this. It never happens that way. And, you know, it's very Kingston. It's very Jimmy Cliff and Bob Marley, and you guys just nailed it. Um, so was it one of those that happened quickly? In the room no. Today? Well, we probably spent four or five hours jim likes to go to lunch you know so we <laughs> we were a little while songs are born at we, the ice tea, right? we wrote uh for a while and we went to lunch and came back and, and finished it probably around three thirty, i guess and then uh the next day jim always calls me either on my way home or that night and so he called me and said i think we need a bridge and i think we need to change those choruses because we had the chorus staying the same every time and so we got back together another day and spent about two hours on it and wrote the bridge and uh, got the choruses where they changed every time. Well, I think it was a good suggestion because I think the cement on that song is the last line. Mm -hmm. And tell everybody what you do and, and what the thought is if they don't know the song, which I think everybody in the oh. does. Yeah, the thought is that we all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to go right now because we're having fun, especially <laughs> well, at a Kenny Chesney concert. So, so when... Did, did uh, how did you know Kenny was going to cut it? How did all that? When did you hear that? Because you had to be. Everybody wants a Kenny Chesney cut. I mean, oh, that's what yeah. you want right now? Well, I was or George Strait, yeah. and you got them both on one. Song. Actually, one morning I woke up and on iTunes, it you know they have these um, headers that fade in and out, right? And it was faded in and said George Strait new single everybody wants to go to heaven and it faded out and said Kenny Chesney new single everybody wants to go to heaven it was just like rotating all day long because George had just released it on iTunes and Kenny had, had put it out I don't um, think that happened since I swear yeah you know um, was... so have you ever seen him do it live mm-hmm I've not seen George do it, but I've seen Kenny but do it. I know and that's what I meant and the, the crowd reaction is just oh, insane yeah. Isn't it's it? great. Describe that. And describe how oh, you felt the first time you saw it. Oh, it just blew me away. Um, I actually got to go out uh, and write. I was riding with Billy Currington on the bus, and he was opening for Kenny. So I got to see all three of my U.S. number ones in one show. <laughs> I saw the two with Billy, and then I saw Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven. But it just the energy. Uh, I went out in the grass. It was a big amphitheater, and just the energy of the people out there. They were dancing and singing along to the song, and it just makes you... Um, I know that's one of the things you dream of when you start writing songs, you know, is that you'll be in a crowd and everybody will be singing your song, and it's just kind of a surreal feeling. Have you heard from people you grew up with, hometown? I mean, they got to be proud of you for a lot of reasons, and I'm going to talk about the role you've been on next, but it's just one everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Have you heard from people you haven't heard from for a long oh, time I have. because of that song? I've heard from preachers who <laughs> argued with me about the theology of the song. Tell me about you that. Know. What do you oh, mean? they would, I had a preacher call and he said, you know, as a Christian, we should want to go to heaven. 
And I said, yeah, but we don't right now. I mean, we don't, like we want to someday when we're 90, you know, but we don't right now. And, and he well, kind of. Well, that time I'm going to argue with the preacher that day's appointed by the Lord anyway. Right. Right. Well, I told so him, your argument, I said, you argument. know what? If you're ready to go, come over, I'll kill you. <laughs> and he declined. So I think he didn't want to go now either. But I think, I mean, we, we had an interesting discussion about it. But. So. Like everybody else, Marty, people think songwriters come to Nashville, there's the hit, there's the mailbox money. You work for a long time, but then it kind of started, and it started, and it started, and you we're so proud of the role you've been on. And one of the things I like is, is you know, a lot of people are good at a different version of the same thing. A lot of your songs are very different musically. What's your background that led you to Nashville and music in the first place? Well, I actually grew up in Nashville. Um, You're the fourth songwriter yeah. I've ever met. From oh, really? Yeah. I, I didn't, I, I started writing when I was about 11, and I would just write songs about, you know, girls I thought were cute at school and things like that. And then um, as I grew up, I realized that everybody that came to work on our air conditioner was trying to be a songwriter. All our waitresses were trying to be songwriters or artists. And so I was very intimidated, and I just went to school, got a degree in psychology at Lipscomb University. Um and just worked for a while as a youth minister and used kind of using the psychology background with that. Does the, psycho the psychology degree in that study inform your songwriting? Oh, yeah. Does that ever, how does Very that much get into so. the lyric? Um, I think just by, I, I like to study people and to know how people think and why people do things. And so when I'm writing, I try to get behind, not just, not just write about the action that's going on, but what's behind the action and why people feel that way, why they think that way, and that kind of thing. I think that um, that's a song that's going to have a long shelf life. I think that song's going to be done over and over. Different artists with their own little twist on it. I really, it's just one of those kinds of songs. Hope don't you're you right. Think? It's a, it's a happy song, and songs are supposed to take us through, through seasons of emotion. Um, has there been a different version, somebody on the internet maybe, or anything you've heard yet? You know, I haven't heard other than the George Strait and the Kenny, right. and they were very different. It was interesting yeah, to yeah, see how they did them, but um, I haven't heard any others. So the story behind the song this week, Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven, we're going to hear a little bit from Mr. Marty Dodson for the Nashville Tennessean. Preacher told me last Sunday morning Son, you better start living right Better quit the women and whiskey And carrying on all night So don't you want to hear them call your name When you're standing at the pearly gate Said preacher, yes I do But I hope they don't call today I ain't ready Everybody want to go to heaven Have a mansion high above the clouds Everybody want to go to heaven But nobody want to go